Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure to be tonight with all of you. And of course, inviting you all to share this video and to follow us in the different social networks that we have. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So, well, if you subscribe to our channel on YouTube, well, please remember to put the bell there uh, in order that you know every time that we are uploading any new video. And also, well, you can watch all the previous shows there because, well, we have talked about this fantastic region that is Latin America. We have talked about different countries and we love talking about them. So please uh, share this video with all your friends. Also, if you know someone who is interested to come to the show and maybe to talk a little bit more about Latin America, maybe they are people that they are very linked with Latin America or they are people from, uh, from the region and while well, they are doing something outstanding or something that you believe that is interested, uh, is interesting that well, maybe they can come here and share with us, please let them know that they can contact us. Also, all your comments, uh, if you can add your comments, in the comment section here, sorry, this side, yeah, uh, here on Facebook. Uh, please let us know, you know, that as well, uh, give us any, any feedback, tell us what you want to know, if there is any particular country that you want to know more about it, traditions, music, etc. So, well, we have prepared an extraordinary show tonight for all of you as every night, because, well, as you know, here in the Latin America show, we are trying to bring you the best. And, and of course, well, we are bringing you outstanding guests that we have. So, well, uh, I would like to say, first of all, hello to mis amigos, Roger Alarcón. Well, now I can say good evening because now you can see it's more, the outside is dark now. So we can say good night to everyone and welcome. You're going to spend the next hour and a half with some good news. I know, I know the mood is not... In, it's not the best, but I went for a haircut just in case. So I recommend that to everyone. So do the haircut, uh, buy some booze and enjoy it. Try to do something nice in this time off. So if you're off because so many are going to be, they're going to be working. So try to try to do things and call everyone and call all your friends. That's a good task to do in this month. You're going to be at home. Thank you, my dear Royer, of course. And well, it's like, it doesn't matter. The mood has to be like very, very high because we are in the Latin America show and we are bringing you, of course, all this kind of passion and emotions. And we are going to know about a lot of things. And let me tell you, what are we going to talk after say good night or well, no, good evening. Even, even Royer is saying good night, but good night as well. Still being good evening. Good evening, my dear Whitney. How are you? No. It, it is evening, but it feels night. It's like, it looks like it's midnight out there. I just, it's so depressing. Yes, make sure you go to the bar, you get your manicure done, your haircut. I agree with Roger. And thank you if you're watching us live because that means you chose your second to last night of freedom with us. So definitely raise a drink to that. Um, very excited about Brazil and everything that we get to learn about a country that we won't even be able to travel to anytime soon, but <laughs> hopefully soon when the lockdown ends. Well, but this is the way, the best way to travel around Latin America, this show, knowing more. And of course, well, as I have said before, maybe you can put in the list of the different countries that you're wanting to visit after the, once the lockdown is over. So, well, maybe you are going to enjoy Latin America and believe me, I'm very interested to go to Latin America because they are fantastic places there, amazing people, new things to discover. Also for me as a Latino, well, I have learned a lot across this show. So it's a fantastic opportunity to join us. So please share the video. And well, I would like to say that tonight, well, first of all, thank you very much for people that they are start giving you your commentaries, uh, our friend Abhijit, uh, Maricia Maricia, um, uh, Liliana Beck, Gary Dancy, so thank you very much. Share this video with more people. And well, tonight we're going to talk about a fantastic country. We're going to talk about Brazil. So we're going to talk a little bit about technology. Yes, technology, as you remember, well, we have spoken before about Brazil and we were talking about technology is very important for that country also. If I remember well, is the 10th country in the world or something, it's in the top 10 providing aerospace and uh, aircraft into the world and all this kind of research. So, well, 
we're going to talk about technology in different ways. So, well, we have fantastic guests that is uh, Sandra Sinico, she's going to tell us, and also how technology is related with the UK. Technology in Latin, Latin America related to the UK. And also, well, of course, she's going to tell us more about Brazil Tech Awards, that also is a new initiative that they have launched uh, last year or this year, uh, last year, I think so, yeah. And she's going to tell us about that. And also, we know that Brazil is very important about their music and they have amazing music, amazing rhythms. And well, we have a new band that, well, they are like Bantu, Bantu Nagujeje, I hope so. They are not going to complain how I pronounce it, but I think so I say it properly. Yeah, and of course they are going to tell us if you haven't listened to them, more or less, Royer, more or less. Well, yeah, my, my pronunciation is not the best one, uh, neither in Spanish, I think so, but well, it doesn't matter. So, well, it's, uh, I think so this group is a fantastic group that I had the opportunity to listen, well, to hear them. And the rhythm is just sensational, if you believe me. It's a very good option. So, well, please uh, stay tuned to know more about them. And also, Brazil, it's very well known because they have extraordinary food. So we have a fantastic, I say fantastic many times, an extraordinary, uh, brilliant uh, chef that well, she's Luciana and she's gonna tell us a little bit more about herself and about food in general. So thank you very much for everybody to be here. And I would like to say something important because well, we have in this show, we prepare a contest and it was the day of the day contest, the Katrina and Katrin contest. And it's interesting because, well, thank you very much because we have received all the support from different, uh, from different sponsors, like for example, Crystal Grant, that well, thank you very much, Crystal Grant, Nuevo Vallarta, who is providing and well, uh, providing one of the main prizes that is three days and two nights in an all-inclusive hotel in Nuevo Vallarta. This is in Riviera Nayarit. That is a paradise in Mexico that, believe me, you are going to love it. It's just extraordinary, this place, in the Pacific coast of Mexico. So, well, this is one of the prizes that we're gonna have for one of the winners. And the first prize that we're gonna have is gonna be uh, four days and three nights in Maraica Eco Hotel in San Pancho Nayarit also in Riviera Maya. These extraordinary places you can enjoy, these paradises that, well, you will see the coast, you will enjoy the beaches, you're going to taste the flavor of Mexico, and you are gonna be in an extraordinary accommodation as Crystal Grand of Vallarta and Maraica Eco Hotel. And this one is for two adults. Uh, and well, these prizes, of course, I would like to say thank you very much to Javier Nayeri, thank you very much to Metoni Me uh, and our friend Polo Sanchez Valle, who is, uh, who, is, uh, who is doing a lot of marketing here in the UK and across Europe uh, regarding Riviera Nayarit and other places around Mexico. So, well, you can be one of the winners of this one. And also, we have really nice prizes for home prices and people that they are located, by the way. These two prizes, everybody who is around the world uh, had the possibility to participate and to win them. Uh, the, the other prizes, they are home, home prizes. Uh, they are courtesy of Muto. And what prizes are these, my dear Roger? Can you tell us? Well, there's amazing prizes. We're going to see it. Just, uh, um, I'm just going to, we, the, the, our friends of Muto send us the lovely picture so our audience can see it. And then I'm gonna tell you which ones are in a second. Ah, this one's a, there it is. We, the first prize is ample throw worth 300 pounds. The throw is made in a hundred percent baby llama wool. We have a beam lamp designed by Tom Chang worth 150 pounds. And we have our compo book divider designed by Cecile Manns worth 50 pounds. So this amazing price that are from our friends of Mutuo. So you can see the line is amazing. Yeah, well, thank you very much to Mutuo. And uh, well, they are Scandinavian designs and thank you very much for your support and also well, 
uh, this llama, llama blanca that they are providing as well is from Bolivia, because also they are supporting Latin America. So trust me, they are going to be amazing projects. So, well, I was seeing that, well, a lot of people, they post their pictures in this section, the section, if you can just support me, Royer, with where is this, uh, this section, but well, in the event section, we had the discussion and well, actually till yesterday, you had the opportunity to upload your pictures of Katrina and Katrina. And well, we have some people that they were like uh, posting these adorable pictures, uh, really nice. Some of them, all the family, people from all over the world. We have people here also from Bolivia, from uh, Colombia, from Mexico, here in the UK, that they were just posting these extraordinary pictures the, with all the makeup of Katrina and Katrina. So the way, and you can see families there, children, some of them with jewelry, some of them uh, just the makeup, uh, also with some, some of them with dogs and the family. So it's extraordinary. Honestly, thank you very much for all these people that they upload their pictures. So in order to make it fair, the way that they can win these prizes, because well, we were expecting to do it live here. Uh, however, one of the issues that sometimes happen here on Facebook is that the commentaries, you cannot see all of them because, well, they are passing too quick and we don't want to have a mistake miscounting the vote. So the dynamic, you know, that, that you can win these prizes and we're going to give you one way to do it is like, first of all, all the people that they share the pictures, ask to your friends to give you a like in the picture that is here already in the in the event section and also give us a like to the pay Latin America page please uh, and you're going to have one week in order that you can have a lot of votes yeah you can share it with your friends share it with everyone in order that they can vote for you and you can win these extraordinary prizes as I said before the first and the second prizes that they are hotel accommodations and also it's a voucher that you can exchange uh, till one year. So while well, you have one year to change to exchange it. So well, don't worry about lockdown. Well, it's like you are going to have time to prepare your holidays and to go to Mexico. So well, you're going to have one year. So please ask to your friends to vote for your picture that is already there in order that well, you can be one of the winners. People that they are in the UK, of course, uh, based in the UK, you can be the winners of the other prizes. So thank you very much for all the people that they are participating with us. Thank you very much for following us. Believe me that it's amazing. And also we love to share our culture and also that you embrace this fantastic culture that is the Latin American culture. And this in particular, the day of the day, day of the dead uh, or Dia de Muertos in Spanish. So thank you very much for a, also APG Andrew that he's saying, uh, con este frío, uy que rico el clima. Yeah, with this terrible, Cold weather, well, of course, it's a fantastic have a warm weather there in Mexico and enjoyed it. Uh, Iveta Lopez is sending a hello uh, hand there, just waving hand. Uh, Monique Lawrence, hola a todos. Uh, uh, Yvette Lopez, she's saying, Boa noite, Boa noite, uh, Yvette, uh, and thank you very much for being here. So, well, please give us your, uh, your comments, your feedback, and now you know how you can win. So, let's please. Give us a like in the Latin America, uh, Latin America show Facebook page and give a like to the pictures that you like in order that people they can win. Share with your friends and invite them to give us this like to the page and also to your, pic to your picture in order that you can win. And next week, we are gonna have here in the Latin America show, we're going to show you because this is gonna be transparent so everybody can watch and everybody can see the number of votes or likes that people they have. So ask to your friends and you will be one of the winners and we will show it next week here. So we're gonna have one week more of emotion, but well, it's like, thank you very much. Um, so also I have some friends here. Uh, Ilona, hello from Scotland. Hortensia is saying hi, hi. Um, Liliana, hello, Denise, warm greetings. And thank you very much for connecting today. Thank you very much to Liliana. And thank you very much for all the people that they are making possible this fantastic show. People that they are supporting us all around the world because well, we have people in, the, in Mexico, people uh, here in the UK uh, that they are supporting us. So thank you very much for all of you. Uh, Linda Adamson, good luck to all the entrants. 
you look, you all look fantastic. Yes, honestly, yes. So, well, as I said before, we're going to talk tonight about, uh, I'm, I'm just waiting that my laptop allowed me to do some clicks here. Yeah. So, well, as I said before, we're going to talk tonight about Brazil. And well, I told you that, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about technology. So we invited, um, I would call her a friend because, well, she's a, a, she's a lovely person that I had the opportunity to meet her time ago. So I would like to say, good, uh, I think you are mute. Uh, uh, it's coming now. Yeah. Okay. So I would like to say hello to Sandra uh, Sinico. Uh, hold on a sec. Let me ask her to, yeah. Let me see over there. Yeah. Yes, so no. hello to Sandra, how are you? Uh, good afternoon, because you are in Brazil, that's correct, yes. yeah? Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Hello, Sandra, how are you? Nice to meet you, nice to meet you all. It's a pleasure for me to take part in this uh, amazing program. I think uh, programs like this should happen more often because we need to show Latin America to Europe and to the UK and show the differences, the things, the amazing things that are happening here. And uh, that's all, I think it's well, amazing. You're, actually, you're an amazing ambassador of, the La of Latin America. I, I would say it, uh, we have had the opportunity to, well, to, to work with you in, in some, in some uh, events. So thank you very much for that. But well, I would like to start in order that they, all the audience, they will know who is Sandra, where are you from, Sandra, and uh, what do you do? Well, I'm, uh, I've been born in Brazil, but I'm, Ita I'm Italian. All my family is from Italy. And uh, I live here, part here and part in London. And um, well, by doing this and by working with innovation all the time, so I have a company in Brazil that uh, is a 33 years old company uh, for PR communication, strategic communications for the innovative industries. We have been, uh, we've done the, um, the landing of Google here in Brazil, Waze, uh, Xiaomi and other brands that uh, are not so well known as this ones. And um, we, uh, when I opened a branch in the UK, I decided to start uh, promoting uh, and opening a bridge for innovative industries uh, from Latin America to the UK. And so that's why we started the Latin Match Award. And uh, it's five years now that we are doing this, this uh, event and um, promoting Latin America in Europe. And talking about Latin Nature Award that well, um, some of us we had the opportunity, as I said, well, to be there. But well, what a, what is the, the Latin America Edge Awards? Well, the Latin American Edge, Edge Awards was created uh, in order to um, give the scale ups companies above uh, one million dollars uh, of income in a yearly basis to apply and to get, if they won uh, or if they win, uh, a one year for free soft landing program that uh, is composed by one year uh, office at WeWork in London, in each of the offices that you want to choose, um, one year of support of Deloitte uh, to the, the business development, legal, accountants, uh, PR, marketing, digital campaigns, and uh, also coaching, because the culture is so different that uh, really the Latin American need to uh, understand, better understand how to do business in the UK. It's completely different than the way that we do here. So uh, by doing this, they have a deep dive in the UK scene. And uh, after that, they can decide if they want to jump in the new market or not. And this uh, is amazing experience. We've seen that um, we had four winners in the last years. 
and then uh, we see that uh, the impact, the major impact was that um, the companies understood how to work in a different way. So it impacted a lot in the local uh, Brazilian or Latin American business also. So this was very, very uh, important also. As, as much as I remember, we have, well, in the Latin America, edge words, uh, we have had uh, countries as Mexico to Brazil. Brazil, I think it was in the last, uh, the last event, the winners of, the, of this award. Yes. And as much as I know you were saying all this marketing and coaching, all the support that they receive, I think it's around 130,000 pounds, more or less the yes. price, if we saw them, uh, because it's, it's not a small price, and I remember this, no. that well, it's like uh, there are a lot of companies that they are providing all the support as you were saying in marketing, and also that maybe they can know about the sign, how to launch this business across Europe. And what kind of companies they are coming normally, uh, or what kind of products they are offering? Uh, so the major, well, we have, uh, during these years, we saw an increase of uh, different uh, areas of expertise, but as uh, re most remarkable ones, I can say that the smart cities, fintech, uh, health tech, and edutech are growing very, very fast. So these companies are applying uh, every year more in order to expand to the UK and Europe. Okay, and uh, I don't know, can you tell us a little bit more about, for example, uh, you said five years, right? That well, you have been doing uh, the Latin America edge work. Yes, the fifth the fifth edition was um, was suspended because of the pandemic, and so we're going to do uh, it in the next year, in the twenty twenty one, and uh, it will change completely. It will be an, an online edition. Um, because we don't believe that the pandemic will, will uh, disappear until at least uh, the end of next year. So people won't uh, be very, feel secure to travel around and stay and um, stay with the quarantine and all this, this kind of stuff. So many problems. So we uh, decided to make it online uh, with an expo during the London Tech Week. And, uh, but before this, we're going to change a little bit the award. And so it will um, allow people from, uh, companies from four areas of expertise, like smart cities, uh, FinTech, health tech, and edutech, and agritech, five areas of ex expertise to uh, get into a very strong deep dive that will last not more than three weeks uh, in the UK scene. Um, this program will be done by experts, um, very known experts, and it will be an opportunity, uh, a very amazing opportunity because this is a very expensive program and the winners will get it for free. And when are we expecting that this will happen next year? Do you have any particular dates or months that we're expecting to see this one? Yes, we're, we're planning for the, the month of May. Uh, and so the idea is to, we didn't define the dates yet, but it will probably happen on May. And we are going to uh, start at the beginning of May to judge the finalists. Uh, it will be different this, this year because we're going to have four, uh, five categories. So we're going to have four, uh, four finalists per category. So there's a lot of people and the judges will be experts in their category. So for agritech, only experts in agritech, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And after that, uh, we've got the, the, the finalists uh, will, will have um, before coming, before the finalists are choosing, we're going to have a boot camp, a very strong boot camp to prepare them during one week uh, and to um, apply for the, for the presentation. And after that, the winners, there will be four winners, they are going to uh, enroll in a program of deep dive 
in the business development part, marketing, uh, PR, and uh, legal accounting and all the stuff, but online. And then they will get the possibility to meet with business, uh, uh, to have business meetings, uh, meet with companies and investors. And for example, well, you said that well, uh, the companies that well, they have like $1 million uh, profit more or less. Is there what no, they, this will change also. Ah, okay. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Yes, so it's the like, next yeah. year, we're, yes, we're going to have uh, companies from $5 million uh, above. Okay. And who, uh, what are the different requisites or the different characteristics that the companies they have to have a part of this one? What are they? Any particular industry? Like, for example, you were talking agro and uh, agrotech and different ones, like which one who can participate? Uh, uh, so uh, if I understood, because I don't, I'm not hearing you very well, but um, if I understood the um, uh, the characteristics will be uh, to have an income or to show an income above $5 million of uh, yearly uh, to be the owners need to be the owners of the company. So there, there's, there should not be uh, like an investor that's the owner of the business, etc. It could be in uh, companies that are invested, but the owner needs to have the 51% of the shares. And um, also the, uh, it should be Latin American companies. And uh, they need to bring up um, a very strong innovative solution. So it's something that um, needs to have a component of uh, tech, but also of biotechnology, for example, Nagritech, biotechnology, chemistry, a lot of things that really can uh, prove that they are different. So that, and um, that they can uh, succeed in the European market. Well, I think so as well. We are going to see very interesting ideas on coming there. I yes. think so well, also this, uh, this time it's created new opportunities in all the part of technology and how to create like new industries in general or how to develop them in a very, uh, well, you know, completely different environment, if you want to say it in, in, in that way. And one question, uh, Sandra, all, all these companies, for example, when they are like um, awarded and they win, are you continue tracking them in order to know what is the, the different kind of benefits or how they are growing up? Uh, are you doing this part? Yes, it is. it has been a very interesting experience because uh, I cannot uh, talk about each of the company because of, uh, of uh, confidentiality, but uh, along this experience, what I can say is that um, most of the Latin American companies really face a huge difference between both cultures. Uh, they, they feel that they need to learn a lot and they need to come back home in order to understand and to better um, uh, understand the culture of doing business in uh, such a competitive market. Another thing that's important and that sometimes um, the company uh, has a very good solution, but the owner is not prepared to uh, divide the solution with all the world. <laughs> so the opportunity sometimes they come but the owner need, wants to keep the, the invention with him, himself or herself. And so this is also a problem. So there are psychological aspects, um, cultural aspects that sometimes um, bring these problems up. But um, what we've seen that along these years, all the companies that, um, that came and won and also other that took part, they expanded uh, abroad, they are operating in the UK or in different countries. Sometimes not; it's not UK, the, the best one, but they start by doing business in UK and then they, they move along to Germany or to France or to USA. But their internationalization process is started by the award. 
So this is something that uh, it's very interesting. And what we, we see is that really uh, there is a need for uh, better integration between both cultures uh, in the business point of view, I say, and, um, and we lack of that. So bridges need to be built. That's why I think your program is so important because every time we need to open more bridges between the cultures. It's really, uh, it generates a very negative impact if you are not open to that. Correct. Yeah, and, and also, well, it's like, well, we're, uh, of course, you have to tell, let us know when this is coming in May, in order that you can come here and you can tell us and give us an update also about what happened. Uh, but, well, I know that, well, it's like, due this kind of initiative about the Latin America H world, that, well, there were companies in Latin America that they were coming here to the UK and trying to expand to UK or Europe in order to create more opportunities. However, now you have a new project now that is the Brazil Tech Awards. And mm -hmm. I think so it's on the other way that it's from me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can tell us a little bit more uh, about Brazil Tech Awards. What is, what is this? Well, Brazil Tech Award uh, was created because of a demand of the Brazilian uh, ambassador that saw the success of uh, Lata Major Award. And then uh, he, uh, gave me a challenge. So he said, why don't you do, you bring all these companies to Brazil? We need to improve our ecosystem. No? And then, uh, well, it's a good idea, but I don't know if they want to come to Brazil <laughs> or whatsoever. And then he said, no, no, let's try. And then uh, we, we did uh, the first Brazil Tech Award last year. And we had a huge amount of, uh, for the first edition, a huge amount of um, registrations. And uh, we had uh, two Russian companies, uh, two Portuguese and two companies from the UK applying and uh, acting as the finalists. And one from UK won. Uh, and the judges were Brazilian. So uh, first the, for the semi-finalists, we had the judging process with international judges. And then uh, at the end, at the finalists, we, we had the Brazilians uh, deciding who, who, was, who was the winner. And it was very, very interesting because um, for them, it was also a completely different culture, completely different way of doing things. And um, Wow, it's not easy, not easy. And Brazil, it's a huge, huge market. So yeah, you have to adapt a lot. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. And, and also it's like, well, we know that it's a, it's a massive country in general. And also while well, you're working a lot with technology and you are like doing new initiatives in general in Brazil. Uh, but, and, and I would like to ask you here is like how these people, they can participate now. Is this, are we expecting to have a second edition of the Brazil uh, Tech Awards? Yes, next year. Uh, also, we will uh, monitor the pandemic. And uh, because Brazil Tech Award happens at the end of the year, uh, because we have a huge event here uh, in Brazil in November. So we, we did it before, right before this event in order for them to take part in other events. Like the, the same way we do it in uh, with La London Tech Week. So, um, I don't know uh, our plans. It's everything planned to happen in November, October, November of next year, but it depends on the pandemic. Otherwise it will be online only. Awesome. And, and what is the price that they can get in, in the digital? The price will be the same as Latin Tech UK's, but only the, in the opposite okay. side. On the other, so, yeah. Yes. So it's like, as it's you were saying. in the Brazilian culture. Exactly, as you were saying, it's creating these bridges in order that, yeah. well, people that they are outside from Brazil, they can understand and receive all the support in a local market that could be Brazil, and also as the Latin America Edge Awards as well, it's on the other way, like how people, they can receive yeah. all the support to scale up, well, for this kind of scale ups in Europe and, and in the UK. So, well. Yes, so that's, that's the idea. And uh, what we think is that in the next years, to come, we are um, focusing in bringing clients to the winners 
and uh, to bring investment opportunities. So we're looking at all the funds in, uh, in the UK that are interested in Latin American companies and also funds from Brazil that are interested in uh, uh, Brazil in uh, international companies to come. Well, that sounds very interesting. So are we expecting to have this one in next November, right? Yes. Yeah. And if, if people they want to know more about this, it's like how they can make this research in order that, well, maybe I have a company that maybe it sounds like I would like to apply for this. It could be in Brazil or it could be the Latin major world. It's like how they can start like looking for when they are open, these kind of submissions that people, they can start sending their projects. Well, the submissions will start in probably in January of this year, the next year, and uh, everything can be um, um, clarified and be available at the latamedge.com, the website, our portal, and braziltechaward.com. So we have this both platforms that uh, where the companies can enroll and see the questionnaire. We have a huge questionnaire of 36 questions that's not easy to, to answer. So uh, it's all, all, also a way to classify people, uh, companies. And um, so uh, there's a lot of work to do before being enrolled with the award because it's a very valuable award. And one question, um, Sandra, is what is, if you have to choose three favorite places in Brazil, which ones you will advise to our audience to go and visit them? So I can't hear you very well. Uh, if I went, had to choose what? Three? Three places in Brazil, three places in Brazil that you really like it and you will uh, advise to the audience in order that, well, if they have the opportunity to, to go to Brazil, which places should be these three? Well, I would say, well, Rio de Janeiro, it's amazing. Uh, Salvador, the Bahia, it's amazing because it's the, the, our city that was the capital of Brazil, the, the, the main capital of Brazil. And, and when uh, we had uh, the, the immigration of uh, black people from Africa. And uh, so it's a uh, black city and uh, it has all the, this important uh, in Afro culture, it's amazing. And uh, also I would say that uh, the swamplands and the Amazon jungle are uh, places to go. Brazil has so many places to, to, to see and, and it's very difficult to choose. But, uh, and at the last, more than what you asked me, uh, Brasilia. Brasilia is a very strange city. <laughs> it's completely different and uh, it's the capital of Brazil and um, but the architecture and all the the people that are there is so different than uh, I really really recommend. Uh, so there are many places to go. Okay we will okay well now uh, our audience they they can take just a uh, take a look of these different places you know that well if you are going to visit brazil not only for technology or not only if you are going no. to the brazil to get worse take some time to visit take some time to visit brazil the different uh, places that they have and 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 another question your favorite brazilian dish my favorite brazilian dish well i'd say um there are so many, because Brazil, it's a, a universe of foods and flavors. And so um, I would say... Well, give me give me three. Yeah, because I know that it's very difficult to say. Yes. Uh, okay, choose one. Also, if you ask me, tell me one. Well, maybe I have one on top of mine, yeah. but, but I know that it's difficult. So, well, tell me, uh, give me three then, yeah. Well, uh, well, you have the feijoada. Feijoada is very Brazilian dish. Now it's very known as it's very tasty, but also you have um, all the, um, the pão de queijo. Pão de queijo is uh, the, the cheese bread. It's completely amazing. I don't know why they don't export so much <laughs> cheese bread because it's uh, incredible. 
And uh, there are some uh, dishes that you, you, you eat uh, as snacks that are some chicken, um, chicken breasts or chicken, um, I, I don't know, there's no, nothing like that in the UK, <laughs> but it's um, a chicken leg, maybe, that uh, has uh, a cheese inside it and it's um, cooked in a, a very warm oil. It's incredible. It's a coxinha, coxinha. Okay. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, so it's a snack, but it's a big snack. And uh, you can have lunch with that. <laughs> it's, oh, okay. uh, and then uh, tapioca, no? tapioca, all the dishes with tapioca, there are lots. There are lots of things. Um, uh, risotto de banana da terra. Well, there's a lot. <laughs> I so I said, so I, I said three. I just give me with a complete menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brazil. It's uh, can export lots of flavors. Uh, really tasty. I uh, wow, it's amazing. It's wow, amazing. that is that is really 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 nice, Sandra. And also, it, it's very nice having you here in the show, and of course, explaining us. Another side of Latin America, because normally we're talking about coffee or we're talking about raw materials. And we are not talking about technology and how this link that we have with all over the world and how important is Brazil in this particular industry that, well, is growing up a lot. And as, as you said, well, it's not only Latin America growing here in Europe, it's also we are asking or calling people from the rest of the world to go to Latin America in this particular, uh, in this particular way, Brazil, uh, with the Brazil uh, Tech Award that I think is a fantastic initiative. And also it's very, um, it's very good that while you are sharing these kind of experiences with the rest of the world, because also, as you have said before, in, in the Latin America, it's worse here in the UK that while this is a a platform that people they can create networking also and they can know each other exchange experiences projects and maybe if they are not the winners they get more knowledge about uh, well they increase their knowledge and they increase their connections and some of them maybe they are like going to be successful not directly in this uh, particular award but in, in in the complete experience and in the complete journey of their company yes they will have it yeah. yes for sure for sure it's incredible, and uh, in the region we have a, uh, an increasing number of unicorns. So um, it's uh, Latin America is growing in this area uh, very, very fast, and uh, I think we're going to bring some of them to the UK. <laughs> so that sounds that sounds perfect. So thank you very much. Uh, please uh, stay here. Yeah, stay with us. Yeah, you, you don't have to go. I would like to say thank you in general. Uh, Sandra, it has been, it's, it's a pleasure having you here and well, hopefully we can meet up soon here in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and coming back to these uh, events that they were fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for the audience and the opportunity. Now it's a pleasure, Sandra. So, well, uh, she is Sandra Sinico and she is uh, the CEO and, well, the co founder of Latin America Edge Awards and Brazil Tech Awards. So, uh, thank you very much. And, well, we said at the beginning that we are going to talk about another topic that is very important for Brazil. And I think it's about music. We know that they have a fantastic rhythm everywhere that we can find, well, that we can locate perfectly where are the Brazilians because they have all this kind of good rhythm, the drums, etc., and this fantastic flavor and this, this way that while well, they are enjoying music. So, well, we have invited a new band that while well, they are like Bantuna do Jeje, 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 no, Jeje, Jeje, it was Bantuna do Jeje, I think so. Yes, yes, I know, <laughs> and I can see Paulo that he's laughing about me because I'm trying to say like 20 oh. times. I was practicing and I and and, and and I'm very disappointed because yes, I'm gonna say it again. Bantuna Gujeje. I think so that is the correct way. And if not, well, it's like please correct finally. 
this is a preview of my segment in like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? I don't understand. So like you're saying that I'm committed a lot of mistakes or something, or you're trying to say that? I'm not, I'm, not Enrique. Say, I'm just warning the audience about me. I'm not trying to say anything about you. <laughs> Enrique, you need some teaching to yeah, not yeah, talk Portuguese. I, yeah, I'll show you. Eu, eu necessito falar uh, português, more or less. Yeah, my portuñol is very poor, so don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, apologies for that. But well, it's like I would like to say welcome to our friend Paulo. And Paulo, please, if you can introduce the name of the band properly and not in the way that I say it, that would be fantastic. I think you're on mute. I think so you're on mute, uh, Paulo. Yes. So, boa noite. Yeah. Good night. Good evening. Boa noite. Yeah. Good night. Thank you for having me here. Thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure, yeah. Paulo. And please tell us what is the name of the band that I couldn't pronounce it properly. <laughs> uh, Bantu Nago Jeji. Bantu Nago Jeji. Okay. Well, last time, once I did it like 20 times, and believe me, I was practicing. Also, I write it here how to pronounce it, and I failed. So it's like, no, 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 no. God, God, God no. terrible. But well, thank you very much, Paulo, for being here with, with us tonight. Uh, it's a pleasure. I have had your music. It's extraordinary. I love it. Honestly, I love it. I love the rhythm. I I would really like to invite. I think so. We have a bit, Roger. Do we have a bit? Yeah, we have a. And we'll listen a bit, and, and and we can start talking with you, Paulo. But just like the audience, they know what type of music we're talking because I think so. Also, the video that you have is, is really really nice, by the way. But well, it's like uh, Roger, if you can just play the play a little bit of the video and the music. Well, if you find it, let me. Let me put a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, that was just a, a little bit. Thank you very much, Roger. That was it's a little bit, really, really a little, little bit. <laughs> and then we can put the, the very amazing video with this amazing music at the end. Yeah, so, well, it's like, first of all, Paulo, it's a, it's a pleasure having you here. It's like, I would like if you can just tell us a little bit about your band. Yeah, tell sure. us a little bit about Bantu Nagujeje. Yeah. Um, well, we are a nine-piece Bahian Afrobeat band. Um, we started, I mean, the band started uh, not too long ago. It was in January 2019. And uh, we have released three singles since then. And um, yeah, I mean, I believe that for uh, like, like for most artists, right now um due to the pandemic uh things got delayed and plans got delayed but anyway uh we are working through it and um it's a it's a mixed band i mean we have um since we are berlin based we have um german musicians in the band we have brazilian musicians in the band uh and even from uh other countries such as uh, Greece and uh, and our guitar players from Russia, believe it or not, it's a great <laughs> great musician. And um, yeah, it's it's a it's a very um, intense experience to lead such a big combo. Um, and um, well, it's uh, we are all. Um, professional musicians uh, from the jazz scene, from the Latin jazz scene. And um, so that's why, uh, I mean, from, from this mutual interest from, for jazz music, we got together. I write all the songs, I arrange all the songs, and um, I have conceived uh, the, the project and um, the whole idea behind it. And I started uh, to gather the musicians uh, after writing the, the the basic repertoire which took uh more or less like 
two years of research and writing down and thinking about concepts and 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 all that so even though the band started um early 2019 the whole thing started in 2017 so it took a while to get everything together music and concept and all this music and concept as you were saying that well from uh 2017 you started doing it's like also it's interesting the name of the band what is the meaning of the name of the band yes yeah. I, i want to know as well <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, well, the name of the band, um, like you guys could experience, is uh, for most people quite difficult to spell and to memorize. Thank you. Um, and I, yeah, and I was well aware of that, but there is a strong reason for that. Um, I mean, we do um, Afro diasporian music. It's uh, music from the African diaspora, right? That uh, was. Uh, this diaspora that was taken uh, to Brazil and, for, and to many other countries in, in Latin America. And, uh, and these wonderful people uh, brought this, this uh, great culture. Uh, they were brought as slaves. Uh, in fact, they were kings uh, and queens and princesses. And um, they had so much uh, with them. So when I started making this music, writing this music, which is the music from the place that I was born in. It is my, it's from my culture, from the culture of the place that I was born in. Um, I could not help but think about these people, think about these peoples who have gone through all that to make Brazil what Brazil is, to make Brazilian music what Brazilian music is. Um, so I, I couldn't name my band like uh, Berlin Afrobeat Club, Brazil Afrobeat Club, or something like that. It's uh, I had to make a, I wanted to make a statement with that name, and uh, even though it's a difficult name to spell and memorize, like I said, um, it's a necessary name. It's a word of acknowledgement. Well, actually, like I remember it perfectly after all these mistakes. So, well, I think it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it, now I have it here in my mind. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. after a and couple Bantu, of times. Yeah, and Bantu, Nagu, and Jeje, they refer to the uh, three, they were names that refer to uh, three African peoples. Uh, Bantu, which it's, uh, it's a linguistic denomination uh, for Central African peoples and uh, sub-Saharan peoples. Uh, then Nago represents the Yoruba people from southwestern Nigeria uh, and also parts of Togo and Benin. Um, and uh, Jeji was the denomination for the Fon people, uh, Fon Greek peoples. And um, those names uh, cease to be used, but in the religious context of the, the, the Kondomblay, I mean, except but the Bantu. But um, these These names are still used nowadays to denominate the, the main, uh, some of the main uh, Candomblé branches, the, the African Brazilian religion of Candomblé. So Bantu Nago Jeje refer to these branches and uh, this musicality, this sacred musicality of Candomblé is the basis of our sound and our concept. So that is why I chose these names to represent the music. Hmm. Actually, it's like uh, you are based in Berlin. Is that yes, correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And how do you find, or how did you create, how difficult it was for you to create this, this band there in Berlin, finding all the musicians and everybody around you? Hmm. Um, well, it's a struggle. Uh, it takes uh, shifting and... and uh, It takes uh, flexibility and uh, a lot of patience because, um, I mean, if I would be back home, that would be like, damn, like that. But, um, I mean, it's a different idea. We work uh, in, in a clave-based based system. It's, it's clave music. And um, it's, it's a concept that many musicians are not really aware of. They think they can think about Uh, key signatures and, and uh, tonal centers or, or 
many different tonal centers, but as long as but so if, if someone spells the name uh, clave, they think it's a different kind of thing that you put a, a, on top of a metronome. So, well, until you get these things clear, it takes uh, it takes time. So, um, it's it's kind of uh, um, difficult, but uh, I mean that's the that's part of the the, the trip. That's part of the journey. Um, oh, as, yeah. Oh, sorry, Whitney. No, 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 that's okay. Um, so as we saw in the audience got a sneak peek, and I know I got to watch these videos, you do have a few music videos out for the songs and preview to the segment. I apologize, but um, Lefi de Pedra in Sereno, can you tell us a bit more about the videos and the meanings behind the music and even the videos themselves? Sure. Um, Leite de Pedra, which means stone milk, um, it's uh, it's a common expression in Brazil uh, that is meant to mean something that's impossible to be done or almost impossible to be done is to take milk out of a stone, and um, basically it speaks about the the workers who uh, and their daily hustle to make ends meet. And uh, this video was made by a friend of mine, Valnei Souza Santos. Abraço, Valnei. Assistindo. Um, and uh, it was done in my area, in, in uh, my favorite area, the area that I, I used to live in, the center of Salvador. And uh, there you see the, 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 the regular life uh, of the common people of Salvador. And uh, this, uh, and you see the carrinho de café, the, the coffee vendors. Um, you see, you see Pelourinho, you see the, the, the biggest uh, street market, uh, open air market in Salvador, Fira de São Joaquim. Well, and there are so many symbols there and uh, like um, the human life, the, the value of human life, a person uh, picking uh, uh, things in the trash. So it's not about being fancy, it's about uh, depicting uh, truths and you see beautiful things and uh, ugly things and um, well that's the the message and it's about the, the the common people it's about the people that I love the people that you know it's part of my reality so that is Leite de Pedra it's a homage to these people uh, Sereno Sereno was done in Nigeria by my friend Yinka Babalola and um, it's about the, the legend of the Yoruba warrior Oshosi. Uh, Oshosi is the, the skilled warrior with just one arrow that would sit in the jungle and wait for the prey to cross by his arrow and then he would just release the arrow and then he could get uh, the food for the whole village. So that would take what serenity, it would take patience. And basically uh, I decided to release um, this record after um, Brazilian went through a difficult uh, political period um, and uh, the, the, this uh, right-wing government uh, entered in, well, uh, for the, for the um, viewers who who might uh, have a certain political view, I am definitely against uh, many things that are happening in Brazil. I mean, uh, in terms of government, I'm against everything that they're doing. And um, well, so that's why I decided to, to, to send this song, to release this song, which is a serene song, it's a calm song, because uh, the, 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 I mean, we, we were all, uh, it, it tore us apart, um, many of us. Um, so it was basically a message of serenity. Let's wait for the moment. Uh, let's attune to, to, to some higher forces. And, uh, and one of these higher forces is this Orisha, Oshosi. And uh, it's the rhythm of Oshosi that... Uh, that offers this cradle to the to the song so that's the background and sereno depicts the workers and regular people from lagos nigeria where this uh, film was was uh, made 
and it talks about their reality and and nurturing caretaking and uh, which is uh, one of the roles of Oshasi. He is the nurturer, right? Yeah. Cool. I, I would just wanted to ask you, go back to the music. I understand you are a very subtle musician. What inspired you to learn so many instruments? How many um, instruments and how it inspires you? Um, well, I started out as a percussion player and drummer, but I never had the chance of owning these this instruments. I used to practice in the air or in my flip-flops or whatever, because uh, I mean, in the neighborhood that I used to live with my mother, it, it, uh, it was like the buildings were made of, almost like of cardboard. So you would, uh, you would do something in, in the third floor and the, the neighbor for the first floor uh, would hear everything. So for some reason, uh, she believed that uh, saxophone wouldn't be so loud as a drum set. So, uh, <laughs> so that's how the, uh, uh, and uh, since I was listening to John Coltrane a lot and jazz a lot, so uh, I decided to, to pick a saxophone but then I had this this uh, percussion background and drums background, and I was fooling around with uh, bass and uh, guitar, and I had this uh, overall interest for music. And then I started pursuing a professional music career um, and uh, studying music formally. And uh, of course, you learn piano, uh, you take piano lessons, and um, and I kept learning, 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 and um, I'm basically um, self-taught in, in, in so many uh, instruments that I, that I decide to take. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, it's not that, are not so many instruments um, from my taste, but uh, when I start <laughs> uh, to count them, um, actually, I, I, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, I could uh, open a, a studio with the with all of them. And it's just, just passion. Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, as someone who's played the piano for years and years and years, it's hard to teach yourself like those instruments. So, congratulations, because I don't think a lot of people who aren't like who are a bit musically challenged don't understand how difficult that is. So that's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just uh, I think it's every it it uh, rings true for all instruments. Just uh, get one, uh, get the grips, practice them, and then you start learning the the, the path for the others. Hello, actually, it's, it's it's a pleasure having you. I don't know if we can play a little bit of Royer of his music, but um, thank you very much, Paulo, for being here tonight with us. It's like a please. Don't go, we have our next guest as well. She's going to tell us about food. So it's like, I think it's amazing. And I know that Sandra, you're also, uh, and you, Paolo, one question. Give me three of your favorite dishes, <laughs> Brazilian dishes. Oh, um, well, um, first and foremost, foremost, um, I would say the muqueca uh, da Bahia. Yeah? We have muqueca, uh, capixaba and muqueca baiana, so muqueca, uh, it's uh, with palm oil and uh, coconut milk and uh, different seafood. Um, well, muqueca, uh, it's my soul food, number one. Then, um, well, I would also say manisoba, which is from the countryside of Bahia. Um, and um, I could not forget sarapatel, which is... Um, a food that a lot of people would not eat because it, it's uh, made from from, uh, from the intestines of pig, but you know. Okay, yeah, well, it's interesting uh, anyway. Well, also in Mexico, we eat a lot of um, this kind of- uh, Yeah. Yeah, so it yeah. doesn't matter. It, it the comes from the same- And everything, it, so well, it's like, it, it, I think it's normal. <laughs> well, do you know- It comes from the same- the, do you know the history of feijoada? Feijoada is the national dish of Brazil, right? Sure. You, you, yeah. you guys, you guys have heard about feijoada. Yeah, correct. Feijoada, it's a, a it's like beef with different types of uh, meat. It's like beef and pork. So nowadays you have good parts, but uh, um, actually feijoada it was a food that the enslaved Africans created, 
with the parts uh, from the beef and the pork that the, the uh, landowners uh, didn't want. So they started um, seasoning and making that delicious food uh, and made uh, the, the, the landowners uh, come in the night uh, sneaking to see which kind of food was that was so delicious, you know, and then that's uh, that's how feijoada became a uh, Brazilian national dish. It's a African dish, it's an Afro-Brazilian dish, you know, and uh, yeah. that's that. Then you get sarapatel, you get so many other examples. Well, excellent. It's good to know then. Uh, what are your favorite dishes? So, well, it's like now we're going to have a, a, a fantastic chef that also she's uh, she has been awarded. Uh, but I think so. We can just listen a bit of. Uh, Bantuna Gujeje, if I say it properly. Thank yeah, you. yeah, we're gonna listen <laughs> a little bit. Excellent. Thank you very well, much, Roger. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. Bantu Nagujeje. Yes, as he said, it's long, but after some mistakes, you can pronounce it fluent. So well. And so well, our after, next... uh, Sorry, Roger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, carry on. No, no, no. You, you, you. It's over you because well, the next guest. No, I think, so you are going to well, introduce the, our next guest. You talk about technology. Now you talk about music. Well. We're going to talk the best topic ever, the food. <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce our next guest. Well, she is a Brazilian chef in the UK, Luciana Berry. Luciana Berry mission as a chef in the UK is to showcase the exotic flavors and the ingredients that integrate the Brazilian cuisine. She's an ambassador of Brazilian cuisine and a culture in the UK, mixing modern and classic cooking techniques to deliver impressive yet soft, subtle tastes from the country, which until now few other chefs have successful exploited. So please welcome to Lucia, Luciana. Hello, hello, hello. Boa noite, pessoal. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was difficult. I said that we, 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 with Whitney, we're going to learn about oh, no. that. No. Yes, uh, that's yeah. going to be the best sex section. No. But welcome, Luciana. Thank you very much you, you for having me here. It's funny because I saw Paulo's video and I live just on that street because I live in, my dad lives in, uh, 7 de setembro uh, is a main street in Salvador. So I saw the city and I said, oh my God, I feel that I'm at home. <laughs> I come from the same well, place that's... as Paulo. <laughs> yeah, well, you start, even I start dancing. But well, let's start um, with a little bit of you, Luciana, Luciana. I know you studied electrical engineering at the university, but then what do you made you switch careers? to become a chef? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, that question is very easy to answer. It was food. <laughs> <laughs> I came to England and I, I missed the food. <laughs> and uh, because uh, for us Latino, food is a main part of our, of our life. And uh, food is something that brings uh, us together. We talk loud. Sometimes we fight with our family be around the table. Everything happens around the table and there is always food. 
And uh, when I came to London, 2014, the food here was completely different. And uh, it's still people, they didn't season food well. And uh, for me, it was like, you know what? I have to cook here because otherwise I'll have to go back to Brazil. <laughs> so I decided to start cooking. And then, uh, and I did a comeback because I did uh, engineering in Brazil. So I did a comeback to Brazil. So I stayed here and I started in, uh, I learned a lot of things about cooking and I worked in a restaurant and I called my parents. Uh, they always, they had a restaurant and I always knew how good food uh, they introduced to us. So yeah, food was a part of me quite big and I missed a lot. So that's why I, I changed it. <laughs> and tell us a, real, a little bit about your training because when you started training as a chef, you was the most one of the most qualified persons as a mechanical engineer, then you chef. Where, where did you train? Yes, where I did, did train. Yeah, I studied at Le Cordon Bleu. It's a French, like a, one of the biggest uh, cuisine. Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, course that we have, like it's quite very old. Like a, I think two years ago, we did 152 years of Cordon Bleu. So it's, I went to go to the best one. Uh, and I started here in London. And uh, was because this was because uh, I was cooking for I was invited to cook for a lot of important people just before before I had my degree, and then when I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm cooking for uh, so many important people, I have to have a proper degree with cooking. So I started to study. So I studied all the techniques uh, at Cote Bleu, which I was be able to apply to the Brazilian cuisine that uh, I know so well. And they introduced the Brazilian ingredients to the high gastronomy. So that was the, my degree in, um, in gastronomy here. Yeah. yeah, you did that. Um, amazing. But yes, you cook for the Prince Edward. How was this experience? Yeah, it was actually, I cooked for uh, him. I cooked for his brother, uh, Prince Andrew also. And it was very good, it was very good, it was very interesting because this was, I think, it was 2009, 2010. So they asked me to cook for, for the priest. And then I was like, oh, what am I gonna cook? So I, I did, I want to cook a moqueca dish, the, the one that Paulo said, but the moqueca dish that is palm oil. And uh, when we cook for any royal uh, member, you have to be in touch with the nutritionist. So I was in touch with the Buckingham Palace. So the nutritionist sent to me his diet, what he could have, if he could not have. And uh, Mukeka, he never had palm oil. So they decided not to have palm oil. So I did the Mukeka without palm oil. So he tried the, the food from, the African food from Brazil. So what's called Mukeka. And then after that, I also, I, thought, I think the most important one was not the prince, for me it was the 10 down street because I cooked for David Cameron at Tindam Street. And it was funny because a few years before I was just a tourist behind that gate. And after a few years, I was inside that cooking for 320 people in the garden of Tindam Street. And that was amazing because I remember a lot of my friends that they, they, they are not chefs, they are no waiters. All my lawyer friends, doctors, they want to, oh, can I, I help in the kitchen? I can do something in the kitchen because they want to go inside of the North Street. <laughs> so yeah, they want to go in. They want, uh, one quick question. Did the, what did the reaction for the Brazilian food? It was very good because on that day I did a barbecue for them because it was a sunny day, it was a summer day. And I said, let's do the part outside because no points. Like it rained all the time here in London. That day, we knew the week will be a very nice week uh, with sunny. So I said, let's do it in the garden. And uh, they said, what are you doing? I said, let's do a barbecue. And they look at me, what? You're going to do a barbecue here? I said, yes. <laughs> and they like, they thought I was mad. I remember <laughs> that when he saw me and he was like, a, he thought like I was mad. But anyway. They love because I did our Brazilian meat, like a, all the proper way to do churrasco. And they love it. They love it. I do remember the queue was huge. Everybody, and then people coming back for seconds, for third. I came back with nothing, 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 nothing. 
I, I, can, I can imagine all these guys, you having a smoke in number 10. It's like, it doesn't matter. You keep cooking. And then everyone exactly. is in the line. Even I have the, my, 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 uh, my things to take away. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we put a scholar to somber there to dance also. And I remember, <laughs> I remember the, one of the guards, uh, he was there with the huge head. He said, could you bring me a burger after when you finish? And I said, of course not. And he looked at me, what? I said, no, I'm not doing burger. I mean, and he was like, oh, so can you bring me a massive piece of that picanha? <laughs> <laughs> that oh, well, that's amazing. That's amazing memory as well. Master Chef competition you won in 2014. Since uh, you won that, how has shaped your career? Yeah, that one on the Master Chef professional here, uh, I went to the same final. So, and I, on that time, it was very good because people did, didn't know what's Brazilian cuisine. They thought we only eat beans and barbecue. And I was on TV on the BBC, eight o'clock, every day cooking a dish with um, okra, with uh, ginger, coriander, lime, chow chow, chayotes, with many different ingredients. And the people like, oh my God, this woman, uh, which cuisine she's doing? <laughs> So they, they started to understand Brazilian cuisine. And I had to tell them, I come from Brazil, is everybody's related themselves in Brazilian cuisine. Because you have the Africans, you have the Japanese, you have the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, you have the whole, the whole world we have in our cuisine. So everybody was like, oh my God, that's so interesting. So it was good because the embassy sold me, the Brazilian embassy, the Brazilian banks, uh, the Brazilian Fruit Association, the Brazilian Exportation. So a lot of brands want to have me as a face to sell their products in here, to introduce them a new culture that they didn't know. We, they thought we only dance samba, eating beans. <laughs> and uh, so they said, we, they thought Brazil was rigid. Was like that. So when they saw this gastronomy, like a, a huge, with like when I cook like Japanese cuisine, people are like, oh my God, you're doing Japanese. Uh, but what is, what is related to Brazil? It's like, oh my God, outside Japan, we have the biggest community of Japanese in the world. So those things like a mix with, so I open people's eyes about the Brazilian gastronomy. So that's why like I, I travel a lot uh, in Europe with the Brazilian fruits. So, I, so all the big uh, shows and festivals I'm there talking about uh, like Brazil in general, so it's good. So yeah, it changed a lot for me when I was on TV here. Mm -hmm. And then I believe this year you won the Top Chef Award. Um, uh, how did this award shape your career and what are your endeavors like in the future? Yeah, this was, a, uh, this was very good. This was, geez, actually was last month I won Top Chef Brazil. Yes. And that was good because I was in Brazil, because people here in London, they know me, but in Brazil, they didn't know uh, what do I do. And that uh, was quite good to be in this competition in Brazil, because now they see, uh, oh my God, she's outside, uh, outside Brazil, showing our culture. Because the funniest thing, I want Top Chef Brazil, using the cheapest ingredients I was using, ingredients humble ingredients that we have every day in brazil so i made those ingredients and i made it into high cuisine so a lot of people oh my god how she can win she used a shushu is a very cheap ingredient and uh, because sometimes the brazilians they are not proud of themselves of our ingredients they prefer to import things they think the better things are from outside brazil and i say people we have to value our things. So that's why I want Top Chef show you the cheapest Brazilian ingredients and make it into a, into a jewelry. So it was good for them to see that. So now they still like, oh, because I said, if you want to do an amazing dish with expensive ingredients, it's easy. Get a foie gras, get a caviar. It's easy. But the difficult thing is to take the cheapest one and make it into a, into a high cuisine. So I, I said my my uh, my uh, trophy is not for me. The trophy of Top Chef is for Brazilian gastronomy. It was to show Brazil to the world that we can be 
on a high gastronomy also, and we have a loads, a lot to show. But people need to have passion. Need, need people need to understand that we need to be proud of ourselves, the ingredients that we have. Well, I love that passion where you speak. You speak really, truly with the heart, and then it just is amazing, Luciana. Thank you very much for coming to the Latin America show. Where we can find you? Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I have is Luciana Berry on Instagram, and I put a lot of recipes. Uh, people, I'm I'm like every week I'm doing videos also with some of Brazil ingredients that we find in here because that's funny. All the because. We have in the same uh, latitude of like some country. So we have in Pakistan shop, we find a lot of ingredients. So you can cook Brazilian cuisine and you don't need to go to Brazilian shop. That's the thing I want to tell people. You don't need to go to Brazilian shop to cook Brazilian cuisine. You can go to your Tesco, you can go to waitress and you can find ingredients and you make a Brazilian cuisine. So I want to make a Brazilian cuisine universal. So it's easy, it's handy. You just need to know what to put in there. So you can see um, my Instagram and also Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, yeah, I can do Yeah, if you need me anything. A lot of people call me, Luciano, where do I find this? Where do I find that? I said, go in the shop on the corner and say, <laughs> and say, ciao, ciao, is the shushu. Say, ciao, ciao. So it's good. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you very much, Luciana. But don't go, don't go. Stay for the stay for the best section now. It's uh, now time for Whitney. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. All right. So I, I would just like to add for the hundredth time, every time we do Brazil, and by every time I mean two times. Um, I am not a Portuguese speaker at all, at all, at all. And so I had my work checked over, but I apologize if I butcher it. Um, but anyways, last time we did um, Brazil and uh, we talked about like words in Portuguese and words in Spanish that are false cognates and that means that even though they look the same they mean two very different things. So tonight we're going to focus on um, themes of two of the guests both in music and gastronomy and compare what those words are in Spanish and in Portuguese and show you this time how similar they really are. So here's a really long list. I did that one thing that you're never supposed to do and put lots of text <laughs> on a page, so I apologize. But, and I apologize if the pronunciation is wrong, but on the left you have Spanish, on the right you have Portuguese. And you have, of course, la comida, we're gonna start with food, la comida, or a comida, which is food. Um, and articles in Portuguese for the la in Spanish, to say the or just simply nothing at all, it's a, um, just like gastronomia, a gastronomia, um, el chef, la chef, o chef, o chef, uh, a chef, un restaurante, it's very similar, but um with an M, restaurante, um, un café, un café. And so some of these, they're, they're similar to English, like gastronomy, chef, restaurant, café. We have un bar and then um bar. And then to order food is pedir, just like in Spanish, similar in Portuguese. Sometimes there are multiple verbs, but I, of course, took the verb that looked more like Spanish. Um, pedir la cuenta. So la cuenta or um, a cuenta is uh, the bill or the check. So that's to ask for it. And then, of course, you have comer um, for both. You have um, also, did this make the cut? Yes, it did. Beber or tomar. So, Beber is the word to drink, but normally you would say it a lot with tomar. It's kind of like in English when you're saying like, I'm having a cup of coffee, like you would say, estoy tomando or tomo un um, like, café. So both verbs can be used, but I'm assuming in Portuguese it's similar to Spanish, where at least in Spanish we use tomar a little bit more, especially if we're specifying what drinks, um, but not always. And then you have pagar, which means to pay. Um, el café, so el in Spanish, the equivalent is o, so it's o café, um, and then you have el café con leche, and as we've established earlier in Pelo's music with the um, leche de pedra, um, it'd be o café con leche, um, because that means milk, and that's a latte, so it's 
So that's the first set. So lots of words, a lot of them, like I said, they're all cognates. And a lot of the ones on the left, we have seen definitely in all the prior Making Spanish Simple episodes where we introduced food. And so another thing that I did a few weeks ago in Spanish, I don't know why it took me so long, was um, colors. So I did them as well in Portuguese just to see the similarities and there is differences like rojo for red is um, vermelho, I believe. Um, that's how you pronounce it with the H being like a E sound. Um, anaranjado or naranja it, for orange in Spanish is um, laranja. Um, the J makes like a sh sound. And then amarillo, that double L in Spanish makes a Y sound, unless of course you're in certain countries in the Southern Cone, like Uruguay, um, Argentina, Amarillo, um, and that's Amarelu. So when Portuguese words end in O, oh, and I'm making a massive generalization, but from everything I've heard, they tend to make more of a U sound when they end a word. Um, you have verde, um, and that's similar in both uh, languages, just like azul for blue, and you have the color scheme there. Um, so morado, that can be, there's a couple different ways to say purple. It depends on like the shade and whatnot. Um, but rosha would be the most, I guess, like accurate one to morado. And then you have rosado, rosa for pink. You have marron, we roll our R's when it's a double R, marrom. Um, no accent with an M. We have neg negro on the left. Again, those are the Spanish words. Empretu, remember when they end in O, they make a U sound. We have blanco or branco, claro or claro, oscuro for dark, escuro. And claro or claro or claro is is light colors and or just light in general um, as an adjective. And oscuro, eh, oscuro y uh, oscuro y escuro. Sorry, it's been a very long day, and this is a language I've been used. Um, both mean dark. So just a few more examples, and then we're gonna get a little bit into. Oh, and by the way, all those examples are mostly in the masculine form. Okay. And then I did this last time, I did colors, I paired it with wines and I thought, why not? So let's look out, let's see what they look like from Spanish to Portuguese. Of course you have el vino, very important. Um, and in Portuguese, and this might be a little bit wrong, I believe it's um, vino, like a, almost like an enya sound in Spanish. And then you have el vino tinto, that's the same, blanco, branco for, por, uh, for Portuguese. Um, el vino rosado. This one's interesting because it's rosé, as if it's French. And then you have la cerveza, which is beer. Um, and then you have, I think it's cerveza, a cerveza. And then you have el champán or o um, champagne, I believe. So those are your beverages for when you're going out um, post COVID because in a day or two here, we're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> and then finally on to a little bit of music, uh, you have, and we talked about some of these words before, but I threw in some new ones, both in Spanish and I mean, all of it's new to me in Portuguese. So you have la musica and again, la is a musica, el or la cantante, depending on gender, of course. And you have o, um, cantor or a can, uh, cantora. Cantar is to sing. Uh, you have uh, el músico, la música is um, a musician, like one who um, sit, like plays an instrument and whatnot, um, or I guess a singer, because you know your voice is your instrument. Um, and you have uh, o músico, a música, and of course you have um, like Paolo's band, um, la banda or a banda. And then of course, so to play in Spanish, there's like two verbs. One is like for sports and games is jugar. And the other one is tocar, which has to do with music. So tocar música, um, very similar. And then you have a couple um, instruments, el piano o piano, la guitarra, a guitarra, um, la batería or el tambor, of course there are more words for this. And then a batería. Um, and generally when you have um, in Portuguese, you, you normally place emphasis on the second to last vowel in a word. Um, that's something I've learned while doing 
copious research. And then, of course, you have La Cancion. La Cancion, we did this a couple episodes ago, is song. And then A Cansao is song. That C, it's a, I don't know what they call it in Portuguese, but as a French speaker, it's what we call a CD. And that makes the C sound like an S. Um, particularly in front of words, at least in French, similar to this word, um, like an A, like le français. Uh, you see that they, they call it the CD in French. And um, although we don't have it in Spanish, uh, it does exist in Portuguese. And then a few more, you have la letra or a letra or da musica, like lyrics of a song. Um, el éxito, un éxito is like a hit, a hit song. So I, although I did see that word, I was told that o, um, o Successo was a little bit more accurate. And then you have El Album or O Album and El Concierto o Concerto. And that's a concert. And actually that picture over this way, the other way around is um, Pablo's band. So something to look forward to. Um, and then I did have some slang. I'll go through it quickly. It's just a few words. Um, I, are, I actually had a different definition for one of them and I was told, no, 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 they don't use it for that anymore. So hopefully this is hip. One of my um, students um, who's young and youthful and lived in Brazil helped me with these. And so the first one, I apologize if it's a little outdated, but legal, which although it, just like in Spanish, it literally means legal, it's slang in Brazilian Portuguese for cool. And as we know, I'm obsessed with that word, whether it's bacan, bacano, guay, chévere. And then we have um, falu, which um, although this literally means spoke, like when someone spoke or said something, apparently it's an informal way to say goodbye. And then we have valeu, which I looked it up and it said, okay, this one I looked up and it said, it's like vale la pena, like it's worth it. But I was told it's an informal way also to say thank you to someone. And then the last two pepino and a Bakashi. Pepino, just like in Spanish, means cucumber. And since tonight our themes were, one of our themes was food, these two words seemed extra appropriate because like I said, um, they're the name of two fruits. They have seeds. Cucumbers have seeds. Technically a fruit. Um, so pepino is a slang word. Um, and it's like a way of saying like a problem. It's a cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yeah. I can't speak tonight, sinonimo. And then avacashi is like, it's Portuguese for piña, pineapple. And um, and yeah, and you might've recognized pineapple if you've had a piña colada way back pre-COVID. Um, and I do have the words that Paulo gave me, um, leche de pedra, for when something is impossible for next time. So I'll definitely remember that. And speaking of next time, um, if you have some time, I just added some new content to makingspanishsimple.com. So come check it out, subscribe. Um, and there'll be videos are linked to my YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. You have it for all levels, beginner, in, intermediate, A, post A level, anything you want, um, please subscribe and that's it. I think I said that all in one breath. <laughs> very much, my dear Whitney. Thank you very much. So, well, very interesting. And well, it's like, um, well, of course, we, it, it, there's like a commentary here, like at the double, when they pronounce the R, it's pronounced like an H in English. Like, for example, my name that is Enrique in Spanish, or how you pronounce it in Portuguese, it could be Enrique. Yeah. I yeah. did read that. So it's like, <clears throat> yeah, and, you know, and, and, and I have double heard Double R or that sound is like. But I also heard that that could be regional as well. So, um, and again, I'm taking these words from some of my students who live there. So, um, but I heard that could be regional. So I didn't really try to mold yeah. that. And, and actually, well, well I think it's for the show, and I thought, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's very you, interesting. You know, well. it's like uh, people they can understand the differences or well the similarities that exist because, well, as we were saying, Latin America is about the language that we talk. It's not yeah. about if we are in Central America or South America or North America because mm -hmm. we said that Latin America is from North America, still passing mm -hmm. through Central and South America. So it's about the language that we're talking. And it yeah. means that, well, you know, you know what? IT is included there because it's mm -hmm. French, Portuguese, and Spanish. Yes, right. Well, yeah, and that I just you know a French speaker because I've learned French, Spanish, and even yeah. a little Italian. So in, yeah, Portuguese, nope, never studied it. But I do recognize some of like the accents 
that definitely don't exist in Spanish. So it's interesting. To Roger. Me. Teacher, teacher, no. I know you have a lot. Enrique, <laughs> yeah, I know you, but you know what? I'm going to Luciana's house so she can prepare something and she can teach me about this, the Portuguese because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be, that is, that is the best one. That is the best one. <laughs> we are not going to argue about any kind of pronunciation. We are going just to eat and it's going to, yes. maybe Luciana is going to say, just eat and shut up. No, like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so anyway, uh, so I would it, like. Lu yeah, Luciana is gonna say the, the name of the the, the ingredients. Is that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, just just eat. So well, it's like I just want to repeat because well, it's like I have a, co a couple of commentaries here, and well, thank you very much for all the people that they are supporting different people like Elisabetta that well, she can give a lot of votes here, etc., and also Liliana. And well, everybody, Jules is saying that she wants justice, but well, we haven't said how. It's like, well, actually, Jules, we said at the beginning how to win uh, this one. And also, it's just to be fair. And I'm going to repeat how you can win all the people that they upload already the picture. There are not more pictures allowed to upload now, but all the people that they upload their pictures to this uh, contest, Katrina contest, you will have one week to collect as much likes as you can. So the only two things that we're going to ask you is first, is first, uh, I'm going to ask you, I think so that is not the video. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so um, please give us a like to the Latin America Facebook page and also give a like to the picture that you like. Uh, all the pictures, they are available there in the event, event section, yeah. All the pictures they are there. So you can go there also. I don't know, Roger, you can show the Facebook pod where people, where the, well, everybody can go there and can vote directly for the pictures. So you can have one week more in order that you can win. Because, well, it's just to be fair. And let me tell you why. If I ask the commentaries that we have here on the Facebook, sometimes they are not appearing, all of them, or sometimes they are delayed. So as we don't want to miscount, and they are like 23 different participants, we don't want to miscount all this number of votes. It's better that you ask to everyone, share these links, ask that they give us a like in our page, at Facebook page, the Latin America show, and also give you a like in all the pictures that you have there. So it's like you have here, just click in the page that, well, in the picture that you like, people, even you don't participate, don't worry. You, all the people that they are watching us, please give a like. You can give a like to different pictures, not only one. So you can click in many pictures in order that well, because well, some of them, they are, well, all of them, they are outstanding. And of course, some of them with families, some of them, uh, they have jewelry uh, and other ones, they have fantastic face painting or the location and well, every, every picture has a possibility to win. So we're going to give you one week more. And now I'm going to say it exactly in Spanish for all the people that they are watching us in Latin America and all the people that they are, I know that well, they are people that they are participating from Bolivia, from Colombia, both for your favorite country or your favorite person, your favorite, uh, the favorite picture. Please just give a like to the Latin America Facebook page and also give a like to the picture that you like. Así que muchas gracias a todas las personas que han participado. Eh, las personas que nos están viendo en México y en Latinoamérica, denle un like, por favor, a la página de Latin America Show y denle un like a las fotos que les gustan ahí. Tienen una semana hasta el próximo lunes, eh, bueno, el martes, daremos los resultados aquí y de esta manera se nota que es transparente porque todo mundo puede ver el número de votos que las personas tienen. So in this way, everybody can see the number of likes that everybody has. So it's going to be easier for everyone and it's going to be transparent. So that's the reason why. So I just want to clarify this part because we don't want to create any issues. Two important things. Uh, well, the first one is that everybody uh, from all over the world, all the participants, they can vote for their favorite picture. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you're located because the awards from Crystal Grant a Nuevo Vallarta in Riviera Nayarit and Maraica Eco Hotel in San Pancho Nayarit, they are for the first two uh, winners and it doesn't matter where you're based. 
The rest of the price, the prices, courtesy of Muto, they are only applicable for people located here in the UK because the main reason is because the delivery of that products. So, well, that's the way that you can participate. So, well, it's like, uh, and I never, I never tell off Jules. I was joking with her. So, because, well, I can see a commentary here, like Liliana, as we used to say in Spanish, I don't know how you would say it in English, um, uh, Whitney, but it could be like Amarranabajas. Do you know what is the meaning no, of that no, one? So. Nunca he eso. Okay, Amarranabajas is somebody who is putting against another one with words. Ah, like vale. just, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. that is the way that, well, I think so, Liliana now explained that. But well, okay. anyway, so go to the Latin America Facebook page, give us a like, and also you can vote for your favorite. Uh, you have one week. Next week, we will give all the results here. So please, if you participate, share it. If you haven't participated or you didn't participate, don't worry, vote for your favorite. We have, as I said, people from Bolivia, people from Colombia, Mexico, United Kingdom. Uh, I don't remember if I have all the countries there, but yeah. as much as I saw, they are the countries that they are participating. So please do it. And I never tell her off. Yes. No. <laughs> That's what That's I was already have 62. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> Is, is one already have 62 likes? Yeah, well, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I have seen that. So, well, it's like, I, I, that's the reason why she's, okay, so, well, you can go. And I think with Jules is the one that she has 60 something. So, well, everybody has to be challenged. So, well, it's like everybody has the possibility to win this. Three nights and two, no, uh, three days and two nights in Crystal Grand, Nuevo Vallarta, in Riviera Nayarit, two adults and two children, uh, two children up to 12. And this, the other prize is four days, three nights, Maraca Eco Hotel in San Pancho Nayarit for two adults. So it's like, please vote for your favorite. So now is the time that you can do it. So, well, thank you very much for everyone. So thank you very much for our guests. So thank you very much. Uh, I think so here we have Luciana. Thank you very much for being with us. My no? pleasure. Thank you. And hopefully, well, as Royer said, we can meet you soon uh, once the lockdown is over. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't complain if you want to invite us to have a dinner or something. So, <laughs> yeah, it could be like a very good thing. Yeah. Personally, I go to Tesco or whatever. I, I buy this. <laughs> we can buy the ingredients. Yeah, we can. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can buy the ingredients, so don't worry about it. So, thank, thank you very much, Luciana. <laughs> thank you, my pleasure. Uh, thank you very much uh, to Sandra. Sandra, who is there in, in Brazil now, thank you very much for being with us and, of course, for both of you promoting Latin America. Sandra, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure and have a good afternoon there in Brazil. Yes, now it's night. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, now it's night. Well, what time is yeah. there? Uh, it's 6.30. Uh, ah, okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, well, <laughs> so thank you very much, Sandra, and well, Thank you very much, uh, Whitney Nuchereno. Ooh, okay, so two things. First of all, <laughs> I promised I would announce about the VIA Arts Prize winners. Um, this was set up by um, Cecilia when we first talked about Guatemala, and it's the UK's only Ibero-American themed art, arts prize. So just so you know, the 2020 special edition um, which part of their partnership is actually with, with the Embassy of Brazil in London and supported by Instituto Cervantes and People's Palace Projects. Um, the, they have the 30 shortlisted artists on their website and they're listed in alphabetical order. So please get on there. I will post this link in like two minutes. <laughs> so don't forget to get on there talking about voting, vote for your favorite Catherine, Catrina, and also please vote for your special prize because we would love to support them um, and these, I took a quick look at the art and it's fabulous. Um, next week, I forget what country we're doing, so I will not spoil it this time, but in Making Spanish Simple, we're gonna take Enrique's um, slight like little monologue in Spanish. We're gonna dissect it and go through it and correct it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but more to come in Making Spanish Simple, a Spanish lesson. And um, I look forward to seeing you then and have a good night and enjoy your last day of freedom if you're in London, UK. Thank you very much, Whitney. And well, don't worry, because well, sometimes you are not spoiling things. Now we have our friend uh, Yvonne Velasquez, who is spoiling now <laughs> today. So well, uh, I don't know. It's like this kind of um, fire that I have from different sides. And well, if it's not one, it's the other <laughs> one. Okay. 
Wait. Never mind. Well, to well. Oh, yeah. As Yvonne said already, it's going to be Costa Rica, our yeah. next country, and we're going to talk about delicious things. Yeah, believe me. Uh, Roy or Lacan? Hey. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I know we extended a little bit, but thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying with us. These three amazing guests, thank you very much. And, and another note, if you're following the, the All Way Up, this Friday is the uh, chapter of Costa Rica. So you can, you can have an update. So we're going to talk to uh, next week. Excellent, thank you, Roger. So well, also, well, don't forget to invite them to the Rain Dance Film Festival, Roger. Of course, well, if uh, Rain Dance has an amazing, um, uh, a lot of films, so you can watch it still till the 7th of November is an independent film festival. Just go to the website, raindance.org, org, and then you can, you can uh, have the ticket, which is 19 pounds, or you can watch it for free. You, you are here in the UK. So please support the independent films. Excellent. Thank you very much, my dear Roger, so well. And thank you very much to our friend, Paulo Sanchez Valle from Tony Me, who support us a lot with these amazing prices in Crystal Grand Nova York and Manaika Eco Hotel. Thank you very much uh, for Metoni Me and Polo Sanchez Valle. Thank you very much also uh, to our friend from Muto uh, for all the prices. So well, remember next week is gonna be, uh, we're going to talk about um, Costa Rica. So it's gonna be a nice country that we're going to talk about it. And well, remember that this is the Latin America show. This is every Tuesday. 8 p.m. London time. Thank you very much. Have a good evening and keep safe.